It's New Year's Day 2021 and what better way to start a uh, new year following the 2020 we all have with uh, something completely different. So hopefully we have a, a new and different 2021. So what we're looking at here and I left the lights in so that we can see you uh, adequately. This is where my railroad used to be. I'm walking down what was the aisle and you can see the two uh, LED light strips here. That used to be the main aisle in between the two decks and the two main parts of the railroad. And then the staging yards were underneath this uh, ductwork here. Helix was underneath the steps and there was a big reversing loop that used to uh, kind of hang under the ductwork here and then these lights were for the Falls Creek area and there's the as usual even more of a disaster than usual workbench so about a year ago my wife and I decided to uh, build a new house and we finally have moved into it so never fear despite the fact that the uh, railroad is gone it will reemerge in a uh, form not at all like it is or was um, in that uh, this was a very very constrained area and the new house is a 1900 square foot ranch with a full basement so I will show you that uh, Next, it's going to be a while till we get railroad building. We have a lot of work to do to prep the basement uh, because I am not going to tolerate the uh, open ceiling uh, like I had before because that creates just a tremendous amount of dust. So we're def definitely going to put a drop ceiling in the new basement. Um, but yeah, much more elbow room compared to this uh, narrow tail. So this, this row home is only 20 feet wide. And you can see here, we've got a wine cellar there. There's a, a corner, you can see right there, there's a corner. So the full 20 foot width goes that way. So this tail um, underneath the dining room, probably only, I don't know, about 11 feet wide. So not very much space uh, to work with. So fortunately, while it's uh, always a change and somewhat traumatic to, to do something like this after five years of building, I, I'm very excited about uh, what we have uh, in store. So that's enough of the old, uh, focusing again on 2021 and looking forward to new things. Let's look at the new stuff. So here we are at the steps to the basement. And the only thing I've got installed so far is our sign. And since I knew uh, that I was definitely going to use the majority, if not entirety, of the basement for a railroad, other than the electric panel and the water meter, and that'll be below the bench work, so that won't be a problem, everything else is into a, the builder still owes me a door on it yet, but everything else is in a utility room in the center of the space. So this utility sink needs to get installed um, over here from over there that'll be a, just like I did in the other basement it'll be a nice place to wash paint brushes and so forth so yeah have our our furnace water heater water softener telecom all in there so the front wall of the house which is what we're looking at now, is 66 feet long. So minus a little bit of the foundation thickness, you know, you're looking at probably, what, 64 feet. So massive long run. And that is the bits of the old railroad. So don't know if I'll save, I may reuse some of the lumber, um, but definitely I'm not gonna reuse any of the railroad. I will pick it for parts but in the confined space of the uh, the former basement I had a lot of 22 inch 24 inch and, and 27 inch radius curves 
There's the helix. That was a 24 inch radius helix. Staging yards. So obviously this track that was never ballasted, that'll definitely get reused. That was a 22 inch radius curve. That's the top of PPC lubricants without the building. The building is, is somewhere else. But that was the uh, bridge over the Allegheny River. Never intended to have this be a modular railroad. So this is not modules. This is just uh, surgically cut the rails and then sawzalled the hell out of the bench work just to, <laughs> to get it down here. Uh, some pump which will also be underneath the bench work so that won't be a problem and thanks to Dave Deal we saved who helped me on this uh, demolition <laughs> we saved every single tree um, which <laughs> once you see the rest of this basement that will probably that's probably not even one percent of the trees that we need so all of the uh, rolling stock and locomotives are in these boxes and there's the top of Carter Lumber Company. So some of the buildings will get reused, obviously, but yeah, none of the, there's really no point. Why would I use tight radii uh, curves when I can? Uh, the the new design calls for mainline radius of 42 inches. So uh, even an SD 42 uh, 40-2 looks really nice on a 42 inch radius curve. So I deliberately left a little spot behind the utility closet so we can get to the other side of the basement. And I forget the dimensions of this, um, but I think the back wall is, I think, 32. And maybe by 40 minus the steps. So this is probably about a 30 by 30, 30 by, two, 30 by 32 space. And there is a Bilko door uh, right there, so that'll just be a lift out. Um, there, the new design has no duck unders at all. Uh, no helix. Uh, it'll be single track, or I'm sorry, single deck, except for I've got two branch lines that are going to be over and under the uh, terminal staging yards. And um, the Bilko door goes right out to the driveway, essentially. Um, we have a detached garage, so all of my, while well, there's saws in here right now, all of my tools will be in the garage. So that will be the dust creation zone, and there will be no dust uh, created in here to the extent that's possible, at least. Here's the other side of the steps, and this is where we came down. So I do have a design that I've uh, been working on since uh, about August 30th, 2019, when we signed the uh, agreement of sale to subdivide and buy, to lot, buy a lot here in town. Uh, so we're still in the city, but it's a, it's a quarter acre um, detached single family, 1900 square foot single story house. So looking forward to that and in a rare display of discipline I'm gonna use the same geographic extents I'm gonna model the same geographic extents that I modeled in the former basement so I'm not gonna try and go farther I'm simply gonna run from Falls Creek to Butler or vice versa same staging yards but the space between the towns will be sig significantly expanded um, still not enough probably to really reflect the the wide open space of rural western Pennsylvania, but um, it'll be closer. No idea how long it's going to take to fill this space with railroad, but uh, the last house we were in for 23 years, and I, was, I only got back into model railroading for five, so we, I only had a railroad in that house for five years. Um, this is the last house, uh, single story, so if for some reason, <laughs> uh, as long as I can get in the basement, there's, <laughs> there's no reason for me to ever leave here. So. Not sure how long it'll take, but certainly going to spend uh, as much of my time as I can trying. So, all right, now let's see if I can figure out how to uh, get a third planet plan shown on the computer and maybe be able to narrate over top of it. We'll see if I can do that. Okay, here's the overall floor plan of the basement. Just to orient everyone, here is the top of the steps, and we came down, and we turned right, and then this is that 66-foot-long front wall of the house. So 
Uh, as you can see, much larger basement than I had before. And again, the plan here is to model the same geographic extents um, as I did before, rather than trying to model more, uh, I figured I'd model the same amount and hopefully that will create the illusion at least of having uh, a railroad centered in, in rural Western Pennsylvania, where there's a, just a tremendous distance between towns and, and areas. So here would be the uh, Southern or Western staging yard that represents Pittsburgh and Newcastle and would come into Butler, Pennsylvania, um, where there's a number of industries as well as East Butler, where there are some additional industries as well as an interchange with the Bessemer and Lake Erie. Uh, working around through East Butler, we come to WS Tower, which is where the Northern branch uh, came off the main line. So that will just be represented by uh, a very short track into staging and that'll just generate some additional traffic that needs to be handled out of Butler. Uh, following the main line into Craigsville, there was another branch and that uh, served a limestone tipple and a uh, mushroom farm. So that uh, I might change the track plan a little bit, but that's uh, scheduled to be installed and added. So while we're keeping the same geographic extents, it has allowed me to do more with uh, branch lines. Uh, then there was a tunnel um, through an area of strip mines and then over the Mossgrove Bridge. Uh, in real life, if I modeled this, the Mossgrove Bridge would be 19 feet long. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, uh, but I am shooting for about six or seven foot long uh, bridge uh, for Mossgrove. Uh, then we come into Echo and there was a Y at Echo. Um, so I am able to build a full Y, I believe, and that will uh, tie into the uh, rural branch. Um, which will be underneath Butler. And I can show you that on a different PDF. Uh, and then coming out of Butler was the uh, Dayton Hill or Dayton grade, and that was pusher territory. And so long grade up to the town of Dayton. And in steam era, uh, Dayton had a Y to turn the steam locomotives around. Uh, so I'll probably just model the remnants of that, but that was removed when uh, diesel came into play as the, the diesels didn't need to be turned. Um, and the practice was that they would continue, the diesels would run all the way into Riker Yard. Um, and then they uh, could help on the downgrade into Riker Yard with dynamic braking. Uh, a little town of Valier and then Simpson Tunnel. And then we come into uh, the town of Elk Run, just as we get into Punxsutawney. And that is the main classification yard in Punxsutawney uh, being Riker Yard. <clears throat> Be a engine service facility, um, not in the correct location, but that's where it's gonna fit, I think. And then at um, Clo, which was an old coal, uh, coal classification yard, uh, which was no longer in service as a classification yard for coal at the time, but they did load coal there. Uh, that's where the Indiana branch came off. And I can show you that um, on a separate PDF as well. Um, Big Run had a coal mine, although I'm not sure it was still there by 74. Then we come into CNM Junction. That will have a full Y uh, model, just like it will over an Echo. Uh, that goes to the Clearfield branch. Then we come into the town of Du Bois that has a, a large yard and that's where B&O's uh, car repair shops were. So uh, that. Didn't have space to model the car repair shops on the previous layout, but I will on this. Uh, we come around the loop into Falls Creek, which is a large creosote plant. And then uh, also in Falls Creek was a interchange with the Penn Central. Um, so I'm showing the crossing here with a, a long interchange track. And then we come into uh, the Northern or Eastern staging yard, which was East Salamanca. All right, I've got two plans and one of them is for the Indiana branch and that's this plan. So at Clo Yard, um, there was a full Y again, I can't model that. Uh, I may reverse the track plan here and have the, the branch come in on the inside and that way I can maybe daylight all or part of it. Uh, there was a tunnel on the Indiana branch too, so maybe I can use that to, to transition. But the plan with two of the branches, the Indiana branch and the Clearfield branch, is to use the staging yards uh, in either model above or below them. So East Salamanca yard uh, geographically uh, was much higher in elevation than Pittsburgh. Uh, so I'm gonna mimic that in the topography of the railroad. So that means underneath East Salamanca, I can have a bench height that would be reasonable to operate. Uh, 
So it'll essentially be a double deck railroad just at the two staging yards. So uh, coming out of Riker Yard and both branches were served by trains out of Riker um, at this time at least. So that would come down, get onto the branch and either be daylighted or go under the bench work um, and run to uh, Indiana, which will be under East Salamanca. Now, the Rural Valley branch, I told you, at Echo also connects. And so that'll be a staging track here for one train. I also plan on connecting uh, those two tracks with a remote operated turnout, and that would just be for continuous running. So that turnout would not be used during operating sessions. Uh, that way, a train then could run down the Indiana branch, would be underneath the East Salamanca, New York staging, and I could uh, have that local train work the industries in Indiana and then return uh, back up the branch. In a similar fashion, the Clearfield branch also served out of Riker Yard. Uh, the trains will come east on the railroad and rather than going down the Indiana branch, they'll stay on the main line and arrive at CNM Junction where I'll be able to model a fully functional Y. And at that location, although the, the branch line is extraordinarily short, um, the operator will have to walk around. That's one of the only places on this railroad that you can't follow your train. Uh, I guess the same is true going into the Indiana branch, but other than the two branch lines, there are no duck unders or anywhere where you have to walk away from your train. Uh, but in some extent, or to some extent, that gives you the sense that you're you know, distant or uh, removed from the main line. So operating both of these towns, Indiana and Clearfield, hopefully be a, a really neat experience. Uh, and there was a large uh, brick plant in Kerwinsville on the way to Clearfield, um, the North American Refractory Company that I plan on modeling. And I think that'll really be fun to switch. Uh, and then there was an interchange in a Penn Central owned yard in Clearfield. Um, and I might put another industry or two uh, up here just to add some additional interest. So that is the, that's the plan. It's a pretty uh, ambitious railroad. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to, to do this. Um, but really looking forward to having a, a very, uh, I think, functional and operational railroad uh, com compared to my previous one where the space constraints, you know, led me to double deck and a helix and so forth. So that is uh, the Pennsylvania division of the Chessie system version two. So more to follow.